okay year 10 this is going to be tricky enough to do um from home so i'm not going to go crazy and do too much with you today we will see how we get on and i'm fully expecting you to be asking me questions whenever you're trying to work through this so i'll be sitting here waiting ready to answer please ask me um to go over anything that you don't understand okay now before we start into what we're actually doing first of all hockey girls who missed the lesson on pythagoras last week make sure you get caught up on that first so we didn't do anything new that you um hadn't already done in year nine but in all likelihood you'll have um forgotten an awful lot of that so um do spend the time going over that and same rules for it ask me on anything that you're not sure about okay now before we start this as well you're going to need your calculator for this you cannot do it without a calculator and i just need you to check a couple of settings on your calculator now this is tricky to show but if you see on my screen hold on let me try and focus it on this which is a little bit higher up is that a wee bit better slightly yeah so see here the way on my screen it says d that's for degree mode you need to make sure that yours says that as well if it says r or g then you're going to have to change it um this is casio i'm talking about so let me show you how you change it now hang on can i even remember yeah here we go so see the way i hit here shift and then mode which gives me the setup see the way number three is degrees four radians and five gradients hit number three and that will get your calculator into degree mode if you have a sharp i don't have a sharp calculator at home with me to show you but yours will i think from memory say deg up at the top for degrees if it says rad or grad and um, for radians or gradients you need to change that and it'll be a very similar way that you do that somewhere in the setup find the um find the option for putting it into degree mode because if your calculator isn't in degree mode even if you're doing everything completely right your answers will come out wrong okay so make sure you get that set up before you start so pause the video and make sure your calculator is set up correctly before we get going otherwise we've got no hope okay right let me see where am i right so we're going to start doing trig here today and or trigonometry um now these trigonometry rules only work with right angle triangles so do you know the way with pythagoras the a squared plus b squared equals c squared that only works with right angle triangles same for the stuff that we're working with here it only these rules only work for right angle triangles now there's three different functions sine cosine and tangent and you've maybe heard some of these before Nor whenever we're talking normally we do shorten them to sine cos and tan so sine we still say it as sine even though it's written sin and um, don't let me hear any of you saying sin you don't sound like a mathematician then sine right so we still say sine even though it looks like sin cos is short for cosine and tan is short for tangent right um now it is just a function which is all to do with the ratio of the sides on the right angle triangle and the angle that's in between them and it will always work out as i say providing your calculator is on that right mode so once you get a hang of these rules this is pretty straightforward but it does take a little bit of time to get used to it so don't panic at the start if you're if you're a little bit lost on what's going on now again before we go into the rules let's talk about the actual triangle itself so you will be given a triangle in a question and one of the angles will be labeled now the the thing that we use to label the angles with most commonly is theta i'm not sure if you've ever used theta before but it's just a greek letter so whenever it's typed it looks like this but whenever i'm writing it you'll see i write it like that so it's like a, a circle with a wee extra loop on it like a zero with a wee extra loop so that is 
theta. Right, you might want to make a wee note of that, actually, just in case you forget how to say it. Now, with our right angle triangle, same as whenever we were doing Pythagoras, the side that is opposite the right angle, the longest side, is called the hypotenuse. Okay? And whenever we're labelling our triangles, you don't have to write the full word every time. You can just write H for hypotenuse. Okay? Now, the next one that we will label will be the opposite. The opposite side is always the one which is directly opposite the angle that the question is using. So because this angle is labelled, then this side is the opposite. The other side is the adjacent. So that's the one that's beside the angle. And you might be thinking, right, well, hang on, the hypotenuse is beside the angle as well. Well, yeah, it is. But that's why we label it first, so that we'll make sure that we don't mix these two up. So opposite is the one that is directly opposite the, the angle that the question is using, the angle that's marked in the question. And then the adjacent, which we'll label as A, is the, the only one that's left after you've labelled these other two. But adjacent means beside, so it's beside the angle, but it's not the hypotenuse. Okay, hopefully that is not too weird and confusing for you. Now, once we've got the, the sides labelled, there's the ratios that we need to learn. Okay, so you have maybe heard people saying this before, Sokotoa. That is the, the, the sneaky way that we can remember all the all the rules. Now I know they're printed here, but I'm going to write them down um, underneath here as well, just while I'm going through them. Okay, now, SOH is the, the saw out of the Sokotoa, and we use it to remember the ratio that sine theta is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse. So sine theta, sine of the angle, we tend to just say sine theta, but sine of the angle equals opposite divided by hypotenuse. And you do not write out the words every time, you'll be there forever, but we just write it like this. Sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. Okay. Now, that is the, the S, the O, and the H. Right, so that's the so out of Sokotoa. Ka is cos theta equals a h a over h. So cos of the angle is equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And then toa tells us t, o and a go together. So t for tan. Tan theta equals o divided by a. So tan theta equals opposite divided by adjacent. So there's two examples in your notes that we're going to we're going to do using these before you try some classwork. So the amount of classwork might not be a crazy big amount today, but as long as we can get a hang of these rules, I'll be happy. Okay. Um right, let's go. So go on. So the I'm pretty sure the worksheet is a mixture of finding the angles and sides, but for today all I want us to focus on is being able to find missing angles. No. Let's have a read at this. Find the missing angle in these questions. Give your answer to three significant figures if required. The first thing we need to do whenever we are looking at questions like this is to label our triangle. So the angle that they've given us is this one here. So we can label a couple of different things. First of all, we can label this as the opposite because this eight centimeter side is the opposite side from the angle. If you go opposite across from it, that's there. This is our right angle. Normally that would be labelled in questions. And we know the side opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse. The other one left is the adjacent. And it's beside the angle, adjacent to the angle. So then we need to look and see, right, well, what, what two sides are we using in this? And um, see the way we've been given the opposite, which is 8, and the adjacent which is 5, that means we need to be using O and A. So we need to think back to our Sokotoa, what links O and A. So until you get used to this, I need you to be writing Sokotoa 
at the top of your work. You can write it just at the top of your page in your classwork book or whatever. You can write it every question if you want. Um, the more you write it, the more you'll remember it though. So writing it every question might be a good idea. But back to this, we are looking, we're using O and A. So if we look here, the thing that links O and A is tan. So I know I'm going to be using tan. So my first line of my working out is tan theta equals O over A. That was one of those rules on the page before. So tan theta is opposite divided by adjacent. So my next line that I need to write then is just tan theta equals. I know the opposite has the value of 8 and the adjacent has the value of 5. So tan theta equals 8 over 5. Let's figure out what 8 over 5 actually is. So tan theta equals 8 divided by 5, 1.6. Now, you know the way in algebra I'm always going on about like if you want to find the unknown you do the opposite of the thing that's happening to it. So for example, if I had 2x equals 8 to get x I would divide by 2 because that's the opposite of multiplying by 2. Well it's the same idea here. It's just that the opposite of taking tan of something is taking tan to the minus 1. And I'll show you how you type that in in your calculator um, in a second. Well, I'll show you how to write it first. So going from this line to the next line, I have to do tan to the minus 1. That will just give me theta. It's like I'm getting rid of this tan. Equals tan to the minus 1 of 1.6. Now, typing that into your calculator, bear with me while I try and get my screen to show and still show you what I'm typing. It could be a bit of a nightmare. Okay. If I was just hitting tan of something, I would just hit the wee tan button. Do you see it here? So I would just hit tan and then whatever number it is. But see the way above that in, in mine, it's the yellow writing, tan to the minus one. That means if I hit shift and then tan, it gets this. So on any button in your calculator, if you hit the shift button here and then hit the button, it will always do whatever it is that's typed up above it. So because if you can see here, it says tan to the minus one in yellow writing and my shift is yellow. Then if I hit shift and then tan, see the way on my screen it says tan to the minus one. That's a bit clearer there, tan to the minus one. Now, the Casio's put in the first bracket for you. I'm not sure if um, sharps do, I can't remember. So people with sharp, hopefully yours does. If not, just stick the wee bracket in. So tan to the minus one bracket, 1.6. And then just hit your close bracket and then equals. So that tells me that the size of that angle is 57.9946. This question had asked us to give our answer to three significant figures. So, five, seven, nine. This is our third significant figure. Look to the next one. It's above five. Tells us, tells us that this has to round up. So that's going to be 58.0 degrees. Okay. Hopefully you could follow along with that all right. Now. On page 77, we've got our second example. Similar type of question. So, same as before, the first thing that we should be doing is labeling our sides. Um, let's see. So, here's the angle that we're working with. This is theta. And the opposite is going to be here. Here's our right angle. So, the opposite side of the right angle is the hypotenuse. And then the one that's left is the adjacent. And it is beside the angle. So, it is adjacent to the angle. So we've got them labelled. Now our next challenge is to see, right, well, do I, am I using sine, cos or tan to solve this? So let's remind ourselves, Sokotoa. Now, let's see what sides we've got. And hopefully you're predicting here before I tell you. So we've got A is 8 and we have H, which is 17. So we need to be thinking, right, which one is it that links A and H? It's cos. 
So we're going to be using costs. So the first thing we do is write out the rule for using cos. So cos theta equals a over h. Fill in any numbers that we know. So cos theta equals 8 over 17. Okay, so 8 over 17 gives us 0.470588. So 0 0.4706, so I'll round it to. Now, we need to do the opposite of cos of something, which is cos to the minus 1. So my next line is theta equals cos to the minus 1, not 0 0.4706. Okay, and I'll, again, I'll show you me typing that into the calculator. So, let me see. There we go. Ooh, okay. So to get cos to the minus 1, we hit shift and then cos. And again, see the way that brings up cos to the minus 1 and then it opens the bracket? Just type this in here, so 0 0.4706. Close the bracket and hit equals. And that gets me 61.927. To three significant figures, that's going to be 61.9 degrees. Okay. Now, I, I'm going to add on a worksheet for you to do with this. You'll not be doing every single question, so I'll just list the questions that you need to do in the, the post that goes along with this video. But as I say, year 10, this is quite a big thing for us to be learning for the first time like this. So take your time, rewind this super exciting video as often as you need um, to see can you follow what's going on. Ask me to help and I will be more than happy to. Okay, so good luck. I will probably not put the answers up straight away. I'll maybe wait and give you those um, next lesson or I might get you to submit some answers for me. Just need to make sure I can figure out how to do that. Okay, right. Good luck!